name is Joe Lampin, and I am uh, putting together a video for a long weekend trip that uh, that I've put together. My family uh, is traveling, um, and uh, gave me some free time to go explore and, and ride some trail with some friends that I haven't seen in a while, and some friends. Uh, or some trail that I haven't seen in a while and, and visit some new trail. If you follow me on YouTube, you'll know that I put, uh, I upload a fair amount of trail video, uh, product reviews about bike equipment, bikes, uh, outdoor related um, products. And uh, some ski video. So I really enjoy being outside. I live in Michigan. Really enjoy living in Michigan. There's a lot of great things to do uh, if you like to be outside. I'm currently traveling up north. Going to be heading to northern Michigan, uh, lower peninsula, but northern Michigan. And I'm looking to hit uh, four or five different trails. Currently headed up to Traverse City right now. Traverse City has a couple of trails. They've got the Vasa single track. Uh, which is about a 10, a 15k loop, they're calling it. Uh, so it's about, a, I think it translates into about a 10 and a half mile loop. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be camping uh, at Timber Ridge, which is where the Iceman Cometh Challenge uh, ends. So look that up. That's a fantastic race that happens in November. It's a ton of fun. Uh, but that campground has been host to a lot of mountain bikers. In fact, you can access the Vasa trail system from their campground. Uh, and I'll hopefully be riding that as well. So that's, that's uh, a separate trail than the Vasa single track where I'll start out this afternoon. And then tomorrow I'm planning on taking a trip down to uh, a little bit uh, south and west along the lake shore. There's a small town called Arcadia. And Arcadia has a fantastic uh, mountain bike trail um, that right along the shores of Lake Michigan. Uh, they've got a couple of loops. Uh, they've got a big loop that is east of M22 and uh, accessible by a parking lot there. And then um, a new section that I have never ridden, it's been there for a while, but there is a loop on the west side of M22 that I'm hoping to explore tomorrow um, that apparently has some fantastic views of Lake Michigan. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. And then I'm gonna stay with some friends in Crystal, on uh, Crystal Lake, Thursday night. And then we're gonna head back up north to the Boyne area and we're going to hit a trail called Glacial Hills, and I've never ridden Glacial Hills before. Uh, so it was really um, uh, an, an exciting uh, invitation when, uh, when my buddy invited me up to his family's cottage and then uh, to go ride uh, Glacial Hills. So there'll be more to come. Um, I'll be posting additional video and trail reviews or just trail information, um, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight into uh, mountain biking and travel in the northern Michigan and, and maybe put it on your radar to, uh, to come on up and visit someday. Traverse City, Michigan. 
and rode the approximately 10 mile course that they had there and uh, had a lot of fun. So the, the basic theme, I guess, that I would say the Vasa Single Track exhibits is that it is a steady peddler's course. There is not a lot of elevation um, change, not a lot of quick elevation change. There is not a lot of real technical steering sections. Um, and a lot of it is uh, really fast flowing single track. There were some sandy sections uh, for the, in the, like, I would say the first half, first third to first half. Um, you know, that can, that can be, have a lot to do with uh, rain and whether or not there was a lot of rain in the last week or so. Um, there hasn't been, so it was a pretty dry day. Um, and there were uh, just a couple of sections that had some decent climbs, so, um, which also means, because you, it's a loop, that there's some sections that have some pretty good downhills. Um, they used the downhills uh, for their technical section, so where you were dropping some decent elevation, uh, you would you would uh, really uh, uh, have some, some technical uh, back and forth uh, to go down uh, down the hills, down the elevation. Uh, so not a lot of areas where you were getting uh, a lot of speed going downhill, uh, but again, like I said just through most of the course you were able to keep your speed so that was a lot of fun uh, the trail took me about an hour to complete I did two laps uh, according to my Strava it was just over two hours so and I kept a good clip but I was not killing myself uh, so um, keep that in mind when uh, you're riding um, and then this morning, I uh, took it, uh, a little tour through the Vasa pathway. So I stayed uh, in the Timber Ridge campground overnight, which is where the infamous Iceman Coming Challenge ends. That is the finish line, the finish zone for that race. And right, uh, right adjacent to their um, campground property is the Vasa. Uh, so the Vasa uh, pathway is, is a lot different than uh, the Vasa single track. The Vasa pathway in the winter is, is used for cross country skiing and I believe it's groomed. So it's, it's much wider. Uh, in fact, most areas are, you know, what you might describe as uh, two track. Uh, you can get a, a vehicle, a four wheel vehicle through there. So it was a lot different. It, is, it had a lot more elevation. Um, so there was a little bit more climbing, quite a bit more climbing. And I went for a short ride. Uh, so I don't know if you're able to see this. It's raining and, and um, I'm now heading down to Arcadia uh, to catch up with a friend to ride the Arcadia Trail and hoping that the, the rain here subsides and passes through. The, uh, getting back to the pathway, the pathway has several different loop options. It's fairly well marked. Um, you can't really get yourself into too much trouble. It's the first time outside of racing Iceman that I've ever been on the Vasa pathway. Uh, and so I was able to do a nice loop, probably half hour, 45 minutes, and uh, had some fun. And so I think that's worth checking out. It's, it's certainly an area that you could check out and uh, ride, you know, if you stayed at Timber Ridge, you could probably ride a couple of days and, and do a couple of different routes and see different things. So I, I get the sense that that pathway also gets a fair amount of traffic. Um, Timber Ridge offers parking in their parking lot. Uh, you'll have to maybe stop in the office and ask exactly where they want you to park, but they do allow you to park in the parking lot there and then ride the trails from Timber Ridge. There's also a trailhead uh, parking lot um, that you can search for and, and park at. But um, yeah, so overall so far, weekend or week has been good. Uh, like I said, heading down to Arcadia. 
and hopefully um, that trail um, won't be too wet to ride. It usually is a, a pretty good draining trail, but we'll see once how much water they got there. So. So it's Friday morning and I'm on the road again. I am following a friend of mine um, up to Glacial Hills. Um, we were able to meet up and ride Arcadia Bluffs yesterday. Uh, the rain did uh, pass and so we were able to get out and we had a lot of fun. Uh, Arcadia Bluffs is um, just south of Frankfurt, north of uh, Onekama, and um, along M22. It's a beautiful trail, uh, laid out um, really well, uh, I think. Um, there's a fair amount of elevation uh, in climbing. There's two sections as well, so if you end up hitting the trail, the main loop and the main um, parking area is on the east side of M22 um, and the the other section uh, is on the west side of M22. You can access both from the same parking lot. You just have to ride out to M22, cross the road and there's a about 20 yards north there's a parking lot on the uh, west side of M22 that has an access point to the trail system on the west side. The west side of the road is, uh, is much shorter, um, but it's worth doing um, because there's phenomenal views of Lake Michigan. Um, you're up really high on a bluff at that point on M22, and to take the extra 20 minutes to go and, and do that lap, that loop, is totally worth it, you know, and bring a camera. It's uh, uh, certainly a uh, picture-worthy location. The trail um, is, uh, the other uh, side of the trail is approximately eight to nine miles in length, I believe. Um, what sets this trail apart is that it's eight to nine miles spread out over hundreds of acres, um, where some cross-country trail is you know, a little more compact so you're getting trail, but you're uh, kind of doubling back on yourself, you know, quite a bit. This is just one huge loop, and so it's able to use the geography uh, or topography um, in a in a unique way, um, and is able to spread it out. I'm not sure what I'm in for at Glacial Hills. This will be the first time that I've ridden it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to ride again with my friend and his um, some of his friends that live up this way. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a good day. It's sunny out. Um, looking at the weather down south near my house, and looks like they're going to have rain pretty much all day. So I'm going to I'm going to live it up and enjoy it today. So, concluded my ride at Glacial Hills uh, with a fun group of riders this morning. Um, I guess my, my basic response to Glacial Hills is that it's awesome. It is fantastic. It's a ton of fun. Um, there's everything from good elevation um, that you need to climb to fast uh, flowing downhills. The trail flows extremely well. Um, a lot of it was machine cut, and so it's uh, really wide, open, really let the throttle go. Um, the trail system itself um, is, is a little bit different than a lot of the other trail systems that I've ridden before where you essentially have one loop where you start and end, you know, in the parking lot. This has a couple of different parking lots that you can start from. 
the trail is multi-directional. Uh, so um, you do, you will occasionally run into other riders coming in the other, other direction, but and we did today. But um, the great thing about the trail is that everybody's out there and knows that they're going to run into um, other riders. Um, an extremely um, friendly and accommodating, and everybody works with each other. A lot of trail users. There were several runners and hikers out there today as well. Um, and so, yeah, it was it was just a fun, fun experience. Trail system um, is also a little bit different in that it's it's a little bit of a spider web of of uh, points. And so, you know, we rode I think 18 miles today. Um, but you can, there's a lot of different little splits and every tri and every split is, is well marked. Um, but if you want to just get on the trail and rip, it would be helpful to take a look at the trail map ahead of time and understand the numbering systems and, um, uh, you know, kind of put a plan in place for, for how you want to ride it. If you haven't ridden it before, um, there are certainly some sections that are going to be more fun and interesting uh, going a certain direction than the other, I uh, found. Uh, but on the other hand, if you've got enough time and are going to spend some time up there, um, there's enough trail there where you could spend a couple of days and just explore and experience the trail in two different directions and experience a totally different riding uh, style and riding, and riding experience. So um, we... Uh, Ended the, the day with um, a sandwich and a beer at Shorts Brewing, uh, which if you're not from the Midwest and are unfamiliar with Shorts Brewing, let's see if I can get around this. Oh yeah, driving. Um, it's a phenomenal uh, spot. They've got a great outdoor uh, picnic area. Inside is. Uh, very nice, really good food, uh, and of course, uh, if you're a beer connoisseur, uh, they've got really great beer. Uh, I had the Humaluba Licious, um, and on tap, that is just a fantastic IPA. But um, all in all, it was, a, it was a fantastic morning, and so now I'm headed back to home front, and uh, having experienced... Uh, just a really fun few days of, of riding and meeting with friends and uh, experiencing some new things. Um, it's great. Um, we ended up taking a little dip in a, in a local river there after we were done riding this morning, which was super refreshing. It's kind of a hot, muggy day. Um, and yeah, it was just a, a great, great experience. So Northern Michigan is a fantastic place to come and explore trail and and um, enjoy uh, the outdoors and enjoy the, the small villages and towns that are that populate the waterfront uh, in northern Michigan and it's um, yeah it's just a great place to come and enjoy so I highly recommend it if you're looking for a destination spot to come for a week so with that I'm gonna sign off and uh, put this to bed and uh, concentrate on my driving. So we'll talk to you soon.